Well, hello. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Coffee with Stephen. So, this week's blog is entitled Simply Israel. Right? And uh, as many of you who have been following the news probably already know, Israel and Hamas, the terrorist organization, and I call it that for very specific reasons, um, the terrorist organization operating within the confines of the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip launched a rocket attack a couple of weeks ago against Israel. Actually, it did more than simply launch a rocket attack. It launched a barrage of rockets. Now, this was supposedly in direct response to uh, some heavy-handed policing that was taking place in the old city of Jerusalem by the Israelis. Uh, I think that remains to be seen, but anyways, that's what they, that's what they claimed. So this caused a lot of people to sit there and start pontificating about how we needed to stop supporting Israel for having the temerity of defending themselves. And we, you know, the Palestinians are simply individuals that are trying to reacquire their land that was stolen from them. We saw politicians begin to engage in some, I'll be candid with you, fairly anti-Semitic rancor uh, that has actually manifested in people as you know, far away as Los Angeles being uh, victimized by individuals that are supporting the Palestinian cause. Um, and, you know, we can talk about semantics. I'm not entirely sure even defining them as Palestinians is uh, totally acceptable, but for the sake of uh, simplicity, we'll call them Palestinians. Um, this all being said, there has been all sorts of rancor back and forth about what should be done and hand-wringing and whether or not the Biden administration is doing enough, whether or not the Trump administration has done enough, uh, and all that other type of stuff. Um, this particular blog, I actually do propose a couple of solutions. These are actually solutions that I had originally proposed way back when I was in college, but I think that they actually still do have merit. And it does involve utilizing a third country's services, specifically Switzerland. And if you, uh, if you read the blog, which is I, something I encourage you guys to do on Wednesday morning when the blog gets released on the Artemis Defense website, um, you can find that at Artemis HQ backslash blog. Um, I think you might actually find it kind of interesting. Whether or not it actually would come to fruition, that remains to be seen. One group, however, that has been left out of the conversation, for the most part, of Israel's response to Hamas and the you know, original attack by Hamas against Israel, is the country of Iran. I actually believe that this entire kerfuffle can actually be traced directly to Iran, and more specifically, it is a direct result of the Biden administration trying to regenerate the original move by the Obama administration to allow Iran to become a regional hegemon. Um, Iran, and I talk about this in the blog as well, Iran does understand that their military capabilities have been seriously degraded during the Trump years. They need to reconstitute themselves. They also know that they are sworn enemies of Israel and that they do have as part of their sort of animating principle the desire to destroy Israel. Um, Israel is well aware of this too. And after meetings with the Biden administration, the Israelis do fundamentally understand that this administration is not exactly being proactive when it comes to supporting Israel vis-a-vis -vis Iran. Quite the contrary. It, the United States is in fact trying to reorient itself towards Iranian hegemony. So the Iranians are left in a position of knowing that Israel has to make a calculated decision. Do they wait for Iran to reconstitute themselves militarily and then launch an attack against Iran? Or do they take this opportunity of a degraded Iran to launch an attack now? Um, what's interesting is that if the Iranian calculus is correct, then they're basis was, well, let's get Hamas, our proxy fighters in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, 
to launch attacks against Israel and force Israel to become bogged down in what essentially will be a counterinsurgency operation and spend a tremendous amount of blood and treasure to protect themselves closer to home. During this time frame, this would give the Iranians the ability to reconstitute their military position. Um, I, it becomes really problematic and it actually puts Israel into a really tough bind because if they quote unquote fall for the bait, it puts them in a position of having to reorient themselves towards domestic security as it relates to the uh, Palestinians in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. There are, however, alternatives. And I think these alternatives actually have a real possibility of being successful. In any event, read the blog. Tell me what you think. It's Unfortunately, I'm not the world's dictator, so I can't wave a magic wand and make this happen. But it is something that I think does bear some, some thought. In any event, um, you can always email me your comments at stephen at artemishq.com. Hopefully, the blog comment function is being turned on again. But regardless, I want you to train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.